welcome guys first call of 2024 uh it's gonna be a freaking amazing year happy new year everybody um uh, i got a pretty cool announcement i, th I think that it, it's beneficial for all of us right so i don't ever want anybody to hear anything on this call that sounds like alarmingly cool and you're like well good for you guys but what about me because uh if you've done deals with us before if you're you're doing deals with myself and daniel you're looking for stuff we're working on stuff together i mean it all feeds back into the community right all this earnest money and surveys and all this other crap we got to pay for down payments all that stuff it benefits everybody that's doing the work um but we're looking to pull in almost $2 million in the next 60 days, right? Uh, the first M comes uh, on Friday. And then uh, we have probably like 900,000 plus in sales spread out over the next couple of weeks after that. So in less than 60 days, we'll pull in $2 million for the first time. I think that that probably tops all of our all-time sales so far. Yep, 100%. This is going to be the, high, the best we've ever done. You know, so in the, especially in the shortest amount of time. I was listening to uh, Kevin O'Leary, the, the dude, the bald guy from a Shark Tank, and he said making that first million is damn near impossible. He's like, it just never comes. He said, but after that, the second one's easier. So I think we made every bit of, not last year, the year before, I think we closed out right over a million in sales. Um, and then I haven't even tallied up what we did this year, but uh, now it's year. like, I feel like we... 2022, yeah, like we, we did a million. 2023, we did a lot. Yeah. Well, I, I, I was going to say, it sounds like we... Uh, it sounds like we pulled in what we pulled in the last two years almost. And, and we're going to pull it in like in 45 to 60 days. So it, things are progressing. Things are moving faster. Um, congrats to you, Daniel, and everybody involved that's doing deals with us. But yeah, the momentum's building, guys. Everything we talked about, everything we've been promising for the last several years, it's all coming to fruition now. We have uh, three recordings or four. It says the future of the hive mind is what they're called. And uh, I mean, it's all playing out exactly like we talked about it. So super exciting stuff. I just got a text today. About two and a half hours ago, uh, the gentleman says, hey, I got somebody that wants to throw $10 million in see all his land deals. So this is a second set of $10 million that's looking at us right now. And uh, this is pretty exciting times, man. Yep, pretty exciting times. So how this correlates with everybody here is that feeds the machine. It goes into, at least kind of said it alluded to it, didn't really explain what it did till the end. But it feeds back into earnest money, it feeds back into buying deals, it feeds back into paying wholesalers, it feeds back into all the stuff that we do here. So I'm excited. It's going to be a good year. So I, I tell you, having the cash on hand is it's going to be cool because when you guys bring a deal now, you know, we're structuring it, seller finance and zero down and all this crazy stuff. So you can buy a big property, multi-million dollar property with little to nothing out of pocket. But having the cash on hand now, you know, I don't think we should convert over to buying things 100% of the cash. We should still take, stick to our creative finance and seller finance strategies. But now having the cash on hand is going to give us a lot of flexibility, man. Yep, we can be a little bit of bullies. So if we find a bigger property, we can put 20% down, 25% down. I mean, even 40% down if it makes sense. So, um, it and we can buy cash. I mean, we can buy, if we get a deep enough discount, we can buy cash. So um, it gives us a lot of flexibility on our side um, and your side with making offers and negotiating to talk to the seller. So um, one thing I told, I talked to Anthony today, I was like, um, any deals that were on the fence, uh, right now, maybe a time to recheck up the conversation. We're looking to contract some stuff because uh, we may have that capital availability in the next 45 days or less. So anything we lock up now is going to go straight to that um, for that capital allocation. So I'm excited about that. So um, everything that we've touched, we're going back to and recontacting and reconnecting because if you lost a deal and for whatever reason, go back and hit them again or give it to somebody else and go back and hit it again. And guarantee you, most nine times out of ten, it didn't sell. So um, somebody else can somebody else can hit that lead, or you can hit that lead again and uh, restrike that lead and turn it into a buyer again. Yeah, I tell you, we've been getting a lot of callbacks now. Um, Ruben got one. So yeah, people that you touched six months ago, a year ago, we we preach on it all the time. Touch them, try to negotiate. They'll shut you down. No, oh, that's they want too much. They're not ready to sell right now. Put them on an automatic follow up indefinitely, right forever. The, the text message says, hey, do you sell the property yet? And it doesn't say anything else. Uh, I hit them every 90 days, right? You can do that automated through the CRM, any CRM. You can do a free CRM um, and just hit them every 90 days. Have you sold the property yet? And just do that indefinitely. People come back. They got to sell. Situations change. People that said they weren't open to seller finance are now saying they're open to, they're open to terms now. So these properties don't go anywhere, guys. They're going to sit there. So I know you guys get excited. And you're like, we got to let them. We got to send some, something now. These properties aren't going anywhere ever. So. I think we're in the perfect niche, perfect field, perfect market. Things are still selling. We're still selling a ton of properties, surprisingly. So, I mean, I thought with the recession, we might, we might slow down. But if anything, I think we're speeding up just a little bit. 
And so plenty of opportunity right now, guys. And I think this year the interest rates are going to start softening up a little bit. So I think we're going to have a little mini boom right before the election. So now's the time to go to work. Now it's time to go to work, 100%. So uh, for everybody here, 2024 is going to be the year, man. I'm excited. Um, today, uh, I know Anthony's probably at the airport running around. Uh, I was going to cover a live sales call. I, I posted a link in the group. I'm actually going to play it here, and we'll break down the call. Um, we had, uh, back in October, we recorded this. Um, we had the opportunity to record a live sales call. So I'll play the video, and I'll pause it at key points. If you guys want to make comments on the thing, we kind of break down different things that Anthony says um, in the video. If you haven't seen it already, but I made I did a I did a questionnaire or a poll inside the group uh, about two weeks ago about more things you guys wanted to see, and I had like two or three people hit up that they wanted live seller calls. So I think this is a perfect one to kind of go over since we actually have a video for it. So not all the recordings have a video, but this one does, and I just released it today, so it's very fresh off the presses, and uh, hopefully hopefully I'll like it and learn something off of it. Uh, the call is pretty cool because. The seller is very abrasive at front, and then he convinces them at the end, and they're like, oh, I think we should really buy this property. So uh, let me jump into it, and then... Uh, it's a buyer, guys... right? It's a buyer call, ain't it? It's a buyer call, yeah. It's a buyer call. All right, here we go. Hey, Jess. Hey, Jess, how you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. I'm not too bad, not too bad. So what's going on? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Okay, cool. Well, uh, well, Daphne tells me that you're interested in the 15 acres over in Castro. I have Okay, great. So in order to do those center finance, um, your yeah. basically the property uh, price will be five seventy and five. Uh, your payment uh, we can do ten percent down. So you're looking at about probably fifty six, fifty seven thousand after closing cost. And oh, we, right. it'll be go for it. Actually, I'm gonna send you a, a picture of the actual amortization so you can see it exactly oh, how it is. Okay. That's going over that's got different than I can already. Seven fifty eight, something like that, right? Give or take, yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, that's what the seller finance. And there's a difference, right? The difference price between the seller finance and um, wow, the cash price. But what I want to talk about is the no dock options. Um, I did have a conversation with um, yes, Casey from Farm Farm Credit. We talked about several options, right? Sure. Um, with the no doc, it seems reasonable, but at the same time, um, and there's a lot of extras. Like, there's, of course, the closing costs you have to consider, and just other fees associated with closing of the loan, just like many ways to complete. There's probably high probably not to anybody. Sure. Um, also, the term, I mean, the term expansion was like 20 years or 20 years. Okay. Um, intention for this property, there's like a little thing with this one, is to live on the land and actually just um, service it either way um, on this property. Is it going to be a long-term hold or is it, are you doing a 1031 or anything like that? Um, um, I would prefer to do a long-term hold, if I'm being honest, and then we'll get a long-term hold. Um, but I would prefer to do a long-term hold if I'm being honest. So unpredictable, right? Um, but I'd like to hold it, to be quite honest. Okay, so... Uh, in that property, we've sold every acre, every tract on that property has gone for 29000 cash. 
right? And then we are open to the idea of seller financing, but it really doesn't benefit us from a lender's perspective. So if I have to go borrow the money, then it costs me something, right? But then if you can't get like seller financing to you, then it leaves us holding the bulk of the debt. And I'm okay with that. Uh, but there's, as long as we're paying for that money. So that's why there's a little bit higher sales price uh, on that uh, seller finance situation. So I think the price is very fair. I talked with Citri from the county before we uh, worked on the subdivide and how we were going to break it up. And he has two big ranches, bigger than mine. And he's selling up for 60 and 70,000 an acre in Castroville. We, have, we got that big giant Microsoft plant coming. So at 29,000 right now, I think we're at 50 cents on the dollar. So if I end up having to get a loan to, to close out on everything the way we're, we're planning on developing it out, then I can't offer that discount anymore. I can't sell it for 29. So that's why if you pay a little bit more for seller finance, then you're kind of in the deal with us. And then if you just pay cash, you're getting an amazing, amazing deal. And if you plan to develop that lot, like maybe put some uh, some like flex space right now, that's very popular. Uh, I would invest with you into that flex space. So I was just kind of curious what you were planning on doing with it. If it was like going to be for a residential. Um, partially residential, not fully. Have you seen the front um, that's flood zone? I'm sorry? Have you seen the front that's flood zone? The front that is flood zone. Yeah, that whole highway, all 281, that county road, uh, FEMA's showing it in the flood zone for whatever reason. So just FYI, uh, the front portion of that property is, is showing flood zone. Is it really? Yeah. All right, so one thing I want to say on that part is Anthony's very... The seller it was kind of saying it's expensive, expensive in the front end, and then he kind of solidifies why he wants them to take the seller finance offer, and then he's being he's giving them any type of curveball that some buyer some sellers would say, essentially oh be, being the flood zone have them do their own due diligence all that stuff he's saying a front so he's trying to build up uh, confidence and trust with with the buyer. Yeah, I was not aware. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so that we have a map and we can show you. You can develop like the back half of the lot, but right against the. Yeah, uh, the, the back half of the lot because it does have two entrance points, right? Yeah, that's what's um, so beautiful about it. And someday when that flood zone gets remediated or you do a flood study and you can get it corrected, you could probably subdivide that lot to a couple pieces, which which drives up the value immensely. So that's why I'm just like, just depending on what you're going to do with it, I can help you have an exit strategy. But if you already have an exit strategy, amazing. So one thing that Anthony does a lot is he gives them the exit strategy on how to monetize the opportunity. Because one thing that we do is we're um, in multifamily, they call it leaving meat on the bone and wholesale say leaving meat on the bone. So we're essentially, he's essentially creating this meat on the bone to sell to the, to the end, end buyer for them to buy it and, for, and give them a reason to buy it and show them ways to monetize because they might, like she said, she's going to hold it. She might not even know how to monetize that lease. She just wanted to buy land. But now Anthony's kind of putting in her mind, hey, you could do this, you could do this, you can give her options on why it's a good opportunity to buy at his price. And she was and she was uh, concerned about the price in the beginning. Yeah. I, mean, I have one in mind, but it's not concrete, you know? Well, I'm super happy to talk about it. We do a lot of land plays, development plays. We develop a lot of flood land, ranches. We do zero houses, zero commercial buildings. We're just ranch people, and uh, we're pretty good at it. No, I agree with that. Um, and I'm so sorry, what, what company are you with? Who are you just? Um, well, I'm a private individual, but, um, we have, I have an LLC that I buy properties through. We're starting up. So Anthony does this a lot too. I'm, I'm really glad I'm doing this like play by play. It's so good. Um, Anthony always says he's a private individual because he never wants to seem like he's some big, large entity. Um, a lot of people in Texas, they like that Texas dynamic. So he never puts himself as he's a big operator big developer he's always he's just i'm a regular individual i'm just a guy private equity fund i have a lot of private investors behind me so we buy and sell in different entities got it yep we're we uh we have a, a tv show we're working on right now and it's not uh, officially tv but like youtube tv we have over 1500 videos but we're starting a tv show called texas ranch flippers oh that's so cool yeah Oh, it's fun. It's been, it's been a fun ride. I think the people that live in Texas, we should we should own the land. We should uh, look, teach each other how to distribute it. Did you want to say Veronica? Do you want to say something, Veronica? You have a question? No, I just wanted to say congratulations, bro. Yeah, we're working. We're working. So the whole the whole uh, video TV show thing. 
that's just to build credibility with sellers and buyers. That's all it is. It's just the marketing strategy using social media to build credibility, which is why we always say, um, if you're if you're planning to do this long term, doing social media is just a bonus. Oh, it, takes yeah. a lot of time, it takes a lot of time to, to work it, but it's it's just it's a bonus. So if you're planning hey, awesome. to do this, go ahead, Anthony. No. I was going to say, just on that same note, uh, if, if you guys do not have the credibility, right, if you're not working on a YouTube channel and you don't have anything that's public facing, you can always use ours, right? Third party credibility. So mm -hmm. if somebody's like, well, what company are you with? Well, I'm, I'm an individual. I just buy, you know, uh, I tell people I'm a general contractor still. I, I still, you know, help with a couple of those things here and there, even though my, my company's officially shut down. But uh, you guys, any of you guys can use that. So, yeah, you know, uh, in our network, we have, a, we have like almost 1,500 YouTube videos. Like, oh, cool. Can you send me that link? Yep. Anytime any buyer or seller does research on us online, I don't know where it takes them or what when they go into the the, the, the Google universe, but they always end up selling to us when they go research us. So you, you guys can use our third party credibility when you're talking to somebody. Well, how do I know you guys are a real deal? How do, how do I know you guys aren't going to whatever? Say like, oh, I can send you several links from our YouTube channel and all that stuff. You guys are affiliated with Hive So you can you can use those links for the team. So the trick is you just tell them to do Anthony going to land and then it just comes up. <laughs> and we worked really hard to make sure our name comes up for if you search our name and land, both of us. So you can just do that. And then you can also go to, I told uh, Marvin today, TexasRanchFlippers.com. Um, at times, I all it takes is for me to tell them that I'm part of the hive mind group in San Antonio. And then they say, oh, so you're with Anthony Gaona. See? And so that's how, you know, they're just like, oh, okay, I know Anthony, or I've heard of Anthony, or, you know, that's when they kind of, you know, um, ease up a little more, and um, <clears throat> they 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 know you you guys are well known. <laughs> We've worked really hard at that. Okay, so it's yeah, not, it's not it's not a it's not a gimmick, and it's not an accident. We really worked hard at that. So. <laughs> oh no, I know that. I know I know it comes with a lot of. Uh, a lot of uh, sacrifice, dedication, and and def most definitely hard work. Um, I know that it didn't um, happen overnight, but you know it, it it feels good. You know it feels good to be part of something that um, they're just like, hey, you know, we know Anthony, we're familiar with them, or we're familiar with the Hive Mind group, and they know. Um, and now they kind of, you know, when they start the phone call, kind of tighten up, and you you feel them at the at the end of that call, or somewhat at the end of that call, um, kind of ease up a little more um, uh, with you, and now kind of get personal, talk about their life, and they're just like, oh yeah, you know, now it's like that comfort level that comes from them um, for the simple fact that you said, you know, you, you you're with someone that's that's known. It just completely changes um everything else but it feels good you know it feels good to be something um you know a part of something amazing and something that's that's growing so again congratulations you guys um and i just you know i can't say it enough that i'm blessed to be with you guys thanks veronica did you want to add something to anthony all right yeah i was gonna say that um uh, both buyers and sellers now have uh, said that they recognize us so when we're talking, like, again, I'm like, oh, I'm just an individual, you know, and, and the more you get to talk and you're like, well, we have a YouTube channel. And I'm like, oh, what's it called? Oh, I might. Hey, I, I've heard of Hive Mind. Like, you know, I mean, bam, it, it's it's worked for with buyers and sellers now uh, where people are starting to recognize the brand. So I would definitely, you know, leverage that if you just kind of casually mention it and see what happens, especially in Texas, right? Because we're so concentrated here. But even uh, Rooster's seen it a bunch of times, too, now. Uh, uh, people have asked his students. Like, hey, are, uh, are you affiliated with Rooster and Hivemind? And so, I mean, it's starting to become a pretty big deal now. So, you might use it as your calling card. And if they if they just ignore it or they don't bring it up after you mention the name, then of course they've never heard of it. Just skirt onto something else. But uh, either way, yeah, you can try to toss it out there and just see what happens. It's, it's, it's proving to be. Uh, very All right, we lost him. I'm gonna jump back into the video. He's at the airport, so we might lose him in and out to each other before foreign entities come in and pick it up. So, I'm pretty passionate about it. <laughs> Right, of course we do. We have everyone else trying to buy our land. And uh, yeah, exactly. So if somebody comes in and they're like, oh, we kind of don't want to sell to them for whatever reason, then uh, we just block them. Like, I'm not, I'm not killing for profit. Like, we're here to help the people that are around us. All right, so that one's a big one too. Um, we've been using that one a lot too. A lot of Texas and Americans like Americans owning Texas land. So uh, there's there's a big push 
check out the episode we call it the water wars that's a couple a uh, couple episodes ago but you can go look, look up high with this podcast water wars uh there's like foreign entities from like uh asia buying up texas land because we have water resources so uh, there's a whole other thing so texas they like the home they like the ownership of texas buying texas land and we make sure we, we reciprocate that uh when we're selling too which is breaking up a little bit here i don't know if my connection went down or yours did but i cannot understand what you're saying it's all robotic <laughs> There, it's Anthony. I'm back. Okay, recall. You you disappeared into the matrix. Okay, uh, I forgot where we were. Um, I can calculate it. I would say it's probably fifty percent or better. Or better. Yeah. It, it really depends what you want it for. If you're going to want to develop multifamily and build apartment complexes, it ain't happening. If you want to develop like a, a farm and grow something and have chickens and goats and cows and horses, dream property. This is the best property we have. I can teach, I can show you how to subdivide it correctly where it would get approved by the by city county all that stuff but uh, it's a it's a lengthy process like I said because you're gonna have to do a flood study there's a lot of involvement that would have to happen before you can get it to that state so like I said it just depends how in love you are with the property how much profit you're trying to make what kind of yield are you looking for right so in the pro If, if you threw up a barn dough on here and got some horses and some cows, there's never going to be a property better than this one. The whole thing is hay pasture, so it's perfect for the animals. Um, there's like a lot of reasons. Oh, you, you, should, you shouldn't have told me that. Now I'm going to raise the price 10%. <laughs> So this is this is a good one too. Anthony, he likes like your your call with sellers or buyers shouldn't be a sales call. <laughs> so he jokes around and makes them laugh in some way, shape, or form. And he does this on that, almost every call. So you gotta find a way to be personable to make the seller laugh. And I think that should be the goal in your call to make the seller laugh because it, it's not when you make the seller laugh or buyer laugh, it's no longer a sales call. Even though it might be, but in their perception it's not. Everything we sent you is all false. Go, go watch that video. Anthony, back. Yeah. What's up? I, I was going to say, um, for, watch that manufacturing happiness video because if you're, it's not like you're not being fake on the phone by getting them to laugh. Like it's Daniel doing it wrong, poking fun at people, trying to get them to laugh, trying to like lift their spirits, lift our own spirits. And so it's very easy when you're doing it to your business family. You know, uh, it's easier to do it to your, your buyers and your sellers on the phone. So uh, you're breaking up a little bit, but essentially what he said is uh, I put, there's a video we did uh, called manufacturing happiness. It says that uh, you, you try and brighten somebody's day um, any way you can in any, any different situation when you're talking to people, because it just, you don't know the ramifications of that, of that conversation. So I put the link in there. If you haven't seen it, go save it. It's a cool video. And we lost them again. All right. We're going to jump right into it. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, it, it's a cool property. We, we people, developers that are going to throw up houses, they avoid uh, creeks and wetlands and everything. And we're, we think it's hilarious because that's how we buy, right? So they're passing on all of it. And we're the ones collecting all the ponds, all the rivers, all the creeks, all the pigs, all the deer. That's all us. So yeah, good luck, KB Homes. You know what I mean? They're not taking, they're not, they're not taking Texas. They're not taking Texas. I promise you. Thing is, if you know, you could just throw the numbers my way. Um, if we talked about, I'd be grateful. Um, I know we talked about the conventional, we talked about the, the, the 57%, I'm sorry, not 50%, 57,000 an acre, you said, right? Or what was it? 
if, if you're going to do cash, it's 29 an acre. If you're doing seller finance, it's 34 five. I don't know why Daphne offered you a free acre, but it works on the numbers, I guess, because you're putting a large down payment. So we will honor that no matter which route you choose to go. Um, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. And then just to be completely transparent, we're in no hurry to sell. We have plenty of buyers. It's a great property. It's the most beautiful property we have. Um, based on whatever type of loan we're going to get, right, to replace the debt, I can either do uh, bank financing or seller financing, but there's going to be a cap, right? Because by the time we put our down payment with the bank, or let's say we give them a million or a million and a half down, whatever the magic number is, then that would leave me in a position where um, I don't have the cash anymore to carry the debt. So at some point, I may not be able to own or finance it anymore. So if y'all are trying to make a move, you know, just the sooner the better. Yeah. Driving scarcity. That was driving scarcity. He's getting, he's trying to get her to act now because we may not have this opportunity for long. <laughs> So it's twenty nine thousand an acre if you're paying cash, and it's thirty four thousand five hundred per acre if we finance it. That helps us cover the debt. So, twenty nine or thirty four five. So if you give a hundred grand down, then you would save thirty four thousand five hundred plus interest. Okay, but the interest is rather high now. It's like eight nine percent or ten percent. Yeah, we don't do anything less than 10. My mentors that do this, they don't do anything less than 12. So I'm a beginner, so we're, we stay at 10. Um, we're at 12 now, but um, what he did is he kind of relayed like other people. Um, it's the it's that other seller. They're the bad guys charging 12. I, I forget. Uh, I did I did sales sales training a while back, but you always make the hypothetical person the bad guy. Like, yeah, they're they're charging way more than us, but I'll give you I'll give you a discount, you know. <laughs> Yeah, that makes you a strong buyer. So I think you having that large down payment, then we can kind of do something outside of the ordinary. So a, a no doc is fine. Yeah, that we can help with any of that stuff. And then also, again, depending on your exit strategy, if we had to look at like tax purposes or 1031s, like whatever tax dollars we can save you on the back end. Uh, we're not legal. We're not attorney. And we're we're not giving legal or tax advice. But yeah, oh, if we if we can show you how to save some change on the back end, then also you can you can recoup short term gains, uh, thirty thousand. Uh, I'm sorry, thirty percent. Long term gains, twenty four percent. So again, if we understand your exit, then we can help you save money on the back end. So even let's say you feel like you're paying a little bit more for it up front on the back end, you're you're, you're so far into the green, it's it's crazy. So you're just helping us do a big giant deal is all you're doing and you're putting yourself in a pretty powerful position. So Citri is selling itself for 60 and 70, right? An acre. So we're at half of that price or less. And then also that big Microsoft plant that's coming. There's going to be like a million square. I think it's just North of us. Honestly, I don't know where it is, but it's going to be like a million square feet. So the, the, the economic boom for Castroville, nobody's paying attention and we're, we're kind of chuckling because we're going after Castroville real hard. If you wanted to go, we have stuff in Poteet, Somerset, Sand, 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 Crapland, all that stuff. And then uh, up north is way overpriced. Like it's turning into Austin quick. East side over there towards Lavernia, it's maturing because of the school district, but it's still soft and it's still sand. Castroville is the only beautiful land anywhere close to San Antonio. I know, I know. I have a really awesome opportunity available in um, on sand, but... Sand is not my thing. It's I'm nobody's not. thing. Once we buy a sand lot, we're like, you know how in golf when your ball lands in the sand mm -hmm. and now you're stuck? When you buy a yeah. sand lot, good luck. You know, see you in heaven because you don't know if that thing's ever going to move. Exactly. Yeah, in Cashville, I'm telling you, there's no rock. Why yeah. Buy it's still desert. My, my friend has a, a big ranch in Spring Branch that he broke up and he's selling. Nobody wants it. It's rock. Who in the hell wants to put in an $80,000 septic system? Castroville is the last beautiful land anywhere close to San Antonio, period. It's going to explode. Yeah. It'll go to, it'll, it'll go, it'll go to, mark my words, it'll go to 100,000 per acre 
I would say in max five years. And I mean, five years time, if it has not gone to 100,000 an acre, I'll pay you what you paid for it. So today, well, if you paid full price today, I'll buy it back for the exact same thing. Well, I'm saying, I'm, I promise you, by that time, you're gonna you're gonna call me. And you're gonna be like, yeah, I'll take a hundred an acre. And so what Anthony's doing there is he's trying to pitch the deal back. That if they ever want to sell, we'll buy it back because um, we don't have to market for that deal. He's already planting that seed before she even bought it. That if she ever wants to sell it, we'll buy it back because <laughs> we'll just sell it again to somebody else. So it's uh it's good it's good. Be like, man. Oh, and then what he was doing before is he's reaffirming all the information again um, towards the end of the call because we're at the end of the call that he gets off right here. Um, he's reaffirming all all the information, everything they covered to make sure she's in still. How did we get here? You were so humble when we first met. <laughs> okay, well, yeah, you know, let, let us know. It, it's there. It's available. It's a, it's a it's the best lot we have. It's the only one that has asphalt pavement on a county road. Everything else is flag lot. So yeah, you're getting an awesome piece. And they're all sold. You said I know. I was really interested in number two. Yeah, everything sold except number one in the front. And then on the back, we have two people on the fence for the lot with the house. One person on the, there's a 50,000 gallon per day water well on uh, one of the lots in the back for 25 acres, I think. It's like every bit of, I think it's every bit of like 800,000, but we're, I think we have it listed for like 650 or something. Uh, but we, we didn't add any value for that 50,000 gallon per day water well. So that's that piece. Everybody's after that one. And then there's a one with a house in the back with an Airbnb that, that you know, pulls in like 25 days a month. And uh, with the house, it's like 980. So it, it, it's a it's a really, really nice property. No, the back lots are still available. Yeah, I have one, two, three, four, five and six. Five has the water well. Six has the Airbnb house. Yeah, something. So if you're going just based off of yield. Like if you, let's say you have investor friends or whatever, and they're like, we have 500, we have a million. There's a certain amount of return that they have in mind from the 12 to 24 month mark or 36 month mark. So if we can understand the type of yield they're looking for, then I'll tell you which property I think would be your best and lowest point of entry, highest point of entry. And if you guys just want seller finance so that you can monetize it, you know, a second time and then turn it around in six months or 12 months, well, we could walk through all that together and we'll split profit. I'll invest with you, whatever you guys want to do. Okay. If you think you're really hard for him to on this one, man. I'm telling you, there's a guy that does glamping resorts all over the United States. And uh, he's, he wants that one with the water well because he's like, I can open up shop within like 14 days. So he's going to come through all these glamping cans with air, with air condition. The most flood zone. Is the, you know, resort. And uh, he's like, I can open on day one because I already have a 50,000 uh, 50, gallons. Crazy. So yeah, that one's gonna go quick. Go on the Airbnb. That there's a 25 acre track for, I think it's listed for 599, and that one is like 26,000 an acre when it's worth 29. So that's another great piece. One of the back lots. That's not a or is it? Yeah, that's all the same lot. Oh, the whole it's all the same lot. Yeah, it's 122 acres. Everything. Okay. Okay, man, you gave me a lot to think about. All right. Yep, just, right, go, guys, just go lay you. down and just meditate, pray rosary. Let me know what you think. Here, homola, homola. Do what you gotta do. Yeah. And just... Jeez, so funny. Get a plane, go to Tibet, go to the monastery where the monks are meditating. Oh, you know, God, stay there for fun. 30 days. Don't drink any water, don't eat any food. And then just fast, fast for Let me know what you think. It will. Thank okay. you so much. Thank Appreciate your time. Yeah, thank you for your time. Awesome. Let me know how I can help. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Jeff. And that is a sales call right there that I hope you all enjoy for everybody here. Textbook sales call from being the person from the beginning. No offense to Mike Flores here, but this dude killer came in and that's a lot of offense to Mike Flores. Like, yes, I was just talking Mike Flores can hear you. <laughs> He's right there. I I could have totally done that by myself. No, it, 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 where's the front door? Oh, no, it's like, yeah, we're going. <laughs> Uh, that was a good call. That was a good call. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed. Great call. Any any questions? Can any questions about that? Um, what you like? What you didn't like? Um, that was that was a good call. We actually got recorded with video, which is very rare. Very rare. I hope you all enjoyed that today. <laughs>
That was strong. Yeah, it was, it was it was it was really good too because she she's coming she was coming really abrasive in the beginning, and for her to be like yeah at the end she's like yeah yeah it's really making it a hard you're really making it hard to say no. <laughs> uh that's, that's good stuff. Pretty much the goal. <laughs> good stuff. Um, any any questions about that? Uh, anything you liked? Anything you didn't like? I love the fact that there was no real aggressive sales technique. Yeah. It's not needed. When, yeah. you, when you've got something great, you know, she was coming up with the excuses why. Yeah. 100%. Or the reasons why, I should say, why she needed it, why she wanted it. Yep. So it's it's understanding their goal. So, like, one thing we always we ask every buyer is what they're going to do with it. Because it kind of we we want we want to help advise them what what they're gonna what their extra strategy is. So some of our buyers they hold some some of our buyers are gonna develop some people are gonna build their dream house on it whatever whatever thing they want to do. But we kind of like okay, you have to go to this next process or if they want to build something like hey we're if it needs a water line hey the water line is gonna be up in six months. We're kind of setting the picture and setting like we're we're answering their questions they might have before they even ask it. So we're always trying to be upfront. Um, with any questions or concerns that they have, just because um, if you try and elude or hide something, it's it, you're you're not going to get the best um, best overall result of what you want. We um, I had a call. Is Diego here? Yep. Diego's here. I don't know if you can talk. Yes, sir. I am. Did uh, he tell you? Can you tell the story of how he sold the guy more lots in Poteet? Oh, yeah, sure. Are uh, you okay, talking so about the speaker one with the, yeah. the 30 acres? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Diego has a cool story. So Diego, uh, we had to we had to go back. Diego found some buyers for lots in Poteet. And Anthony's like, hey, we have to change whatever they're buying. And Diego was not happy about that. But I'll let Diego tell the story. Sure. Well, it all started um with the 11 acre lots uh in somerset the they, they originally wanted uh lot three over there and as you know with this you know with this game whoever comes first gets gets the warm so they they were a little bit too late um and the property they wanted had already been sold the day before so I was pretty upset. I was like, "Oh man, I, they, they really wanted the lot. They wanted to put the money down. They were they're ready to go. They they wanted to buy it all cash." Um, and it, it just so happened that the the ten acre petite lot uh, was down the street. So I took them there just to give them a second option uh, before they made their made up their mind. So they 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 looked at it, uh, but they hadn't really. Uh, wanted it at first. It, it wasn't until after uh, that they saw the high demand in that area that they and and that they lost the the eleven acre lot that they decided okay uh, maybe we should go go ahead and put in an offer on this too. So uh, I give them a, a call back. I give them you know the not so good news that the other lot had been sold, and I told them but we still have you know uh, about. 16 17 acre 17 10 acre lots available here would you be interested in putting an offer uh so we uh, were able to agree on 20 acres and they hadn't even looked at the property they they, they didn't even walk the property they just knew exactly what they wanted um so they they did negotiate a little bit with us not, not gonna lie they, they got a really good price um, for those twenty acre lots, they 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 got the two for three thirty five, and me me and Anthony uh, we're we're trying to come up with a a strategy to um, get them to help out with the the building of the road or or at least use us uh, for the building of the road and the utilities. So Anthony told me, "Hey, let's let's try and get set up a meeting with them um, at the lot and 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 talk and see what we can work out." So we met up there last Wednesday, and Anthony and I met them at the at the little house, 
and we we planted the options for them we would told them hey listen we can we can build a road uh, a paved road and we can add the water meter the electric meter um and it, it turned out that they wanted to be in a different spot and uh, originally from where they were and um i and and the other thing that they cared about the reason why they wanted to switch spots was because they wanted more privacy. They didn't want to be, have too many neighbors in the back, in the front, on the left, or the right. So Anthony looked at me, and I looked at Anthony, and and we we're just like, well, just just get ten more acres, you know, just it will be more privacy. And we we said that kind of jokingly, but the the buyer, it was the wife. She was like, you know what, that that doesn't sound like a bad idea at all. So then we started getting more into the nitty gritty and they, they told us they wanted two water wells, one water meter, uh, and then the electric meter. And that was pretty much it. They were, they, we, we planted them the, the quote on how much all that would be. And we added the, the 10 more acres. And we ended up pretty much doubling that sell. So the original sell was three thirty-five uh, thousand, and an hour later, uh, now the price went up to six hundred thousand with the ten more acres, and and of course we're doing them a big favor and building the road and adding the water water wells because they wanted to, and then the water meter and the electric meter. Uh, they they told me they wanted to think about it for a little bit. I got on my car. I left. They left. Five minutes later, they called me back and they said, "They said, let's do it." And so, uh, the re the re the reason the reason why I, I wanted a Diego to be talking this up because they were only interested in buying twenty, and then and it sold upsold them, upsold them to buy thirty. <laughs> yeah, and he said it so so jokingly too. He was just like, "Oh, if you, if you want privacy, I mean, you just get ten more acres, and you'd be surprised those little questions." It really makes somebody think, and and sure enough, he, they they went with it. They said, "The hell with it, let's do it." So, yeah, no, it was it was it was very surprising. I was not expecting that at all. Uh, I'm still excited about it. Uh, they should be closing by the end of the month, hopefully mid mid January, uh, for 30, thirty acres, six hundred thousand dollar deal. No, what's cool about that one is they're buying all cash, so they're only willing to spend. How much was the contract for eleven acres that they were originally going to buy? That one was one ninety nine. Okay, so they're going to buy eleven acres for one ninety nine. He then sold them twenty acres for four hundred, and then Anthony, oh, it was tw twenty acres for three thirty, right? Three thirty five, yes. And, and then, then we upsold yeah. them to thirty for six hundred. <laughs> Yeah, I honestly was not expecting that at all, man. So we but actually raised, we actually raised the price per acre and sold them ten more acres. We did, we sure did. But I mean, at the end of the day, they're gonna have to pay somebody for the water and the elect the electricity, and we're already gonna be doing a whole a whole um, plan to develop that entire land. So we we already have our our cookies in the jar, and we we. We seem very confident that we were going to be the best, best people to let that do to to let, you know, develop their land as well. So yeah, I wasn't so. privy to this conversation. Anthony kind of told me about it after it happened. So the way Anthony pushed it is that, hey, we're already going to develop that land. We're going to bring the water uh, to the to your property line. So once we bring the water to your property line, you now have a valuable property. Just because if you subdivide those ten acre lots with frontage, that's what we do. So I told Anthony, I was like, dude, you should get an option to buy it back at double the price because once we bring the water to the, the property, it's worth triple. Oh, man. So I told That's Anthony, this, this, this is one of the things where like, yes, we're selling 30 acres and yes, we can get the option to buy it back for, for double at 1.2. But once we, once we do one acre lots around that whole property, those 30 acres might be worth a lot of money. I think we're selling. Uh, we're projecting one acre lots for seventy nine. So if you use seventy nine thousand times thirty, and they're all going to have frontage for easy subdivide that we look for in, in calls like this. 
I mean, he he can you know, do the math real quick. And that's where that's where Anthony upsold him. So uh, seventy nine thousand times thirty is two point three. So if he holds out and waits for us to develop the property, he'll get a four x return potentially for buying thirty acres for six hundred. But the value that gives us is that gives us six hundred liquid to redevelop into the property, so we don't have to come out of cost and raise that money. So that's the value we get. The value he gets is the value at opportunity of us developing out the whole property, and he gets acreage with frontage. Hey, can you hear me uh, properly? Yeah. Go ahead, Mike. I'll go ahead. A homeboy is going to talk. Yeah, I had a quick question. Um, I just wanted to touch on. Go ahead, Mike. One and somebody go. All right. (laughs) All right. All right, all right, all right. So then I just wanted to touch on this real quick because I think it's important. Um, I was talking to somebody about how don't assume that people don't have money. You know, just he asked the question. You, it might have been a joke, but it turns out they did have the ability to buy more. It put everybody in a better situation. Um, with every person you talk to, you automatically well they don't have another ten or fifteen or twenty thousand or whatever the case may be. Um, don't ever assume that. If you ask the question, you'll find out more often than not that these people do have money and they do have money to spend. It's all about are you asking the right questions? And that's right. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Thanks, Mike. Go ahead, Harker. Uh, so I guess the the question I had is, um, if I was hearing that right in the video, did I say the the market rate of borrowing money right now is ten or twelve percent? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it costs us more than that <laughs> to borrow money. My follow up there is like, if like you get a seller at again, principal only 0% interest, like what kind of premium can you pay on the total price point? At what point, if it's 0% interest, if market likes, if if the market rate is 10 to 12? It depends what the down payment is. So uh, did you see navigating the offer by chance? Uh, I don't think so. Okay, this is homework for everybody here. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. It's in the chat. Navigating the offer. So navigating the offer is uh, a talk me, uh, I did. Anthony was, uh, Anthony did not. He was there, but he didn't. I, I did. I did this one. So it's uh it's our methodology of how we uh, make offers, and it all depends on what you can sell it for. So hypothetically, let's say we have a million dollar property and we get it for zero percent interest. If I get that thing for 5% down or less, I mean, zero down, man, I will take whatever price they want. Because if it's worth a million dollars, I'll just take the, the finance arbitrage. So I'll sell that thing for a million dollars at 12% and I'll just keep make, I'll do the math so you can see. Million dollars, just 12 point arbitrage. Uh, let's say it's 360 months. 360 months is 27.77 a month. Just by charging 12% interest, I can make 7,000 a month. Net, that's buying for a million. Clear. For a million. Yeah, I, I was playing around with the the whole calculator too. So I, I was like, "Is if that's making sense, then I, I yeah. guess I have to watch that video." Hundred percent, hundred percent. So that's where it comes down to where, like, if you get long term seller finance, I can pretty much pay whatever price you want. I can pay one point two million dollars and sell it for a million dollars and still make money because I have the finance arbitrage of the whole deal so it's not it's less about the it's less about like the the property and everybody's like oh the property is not the right fit i mean if it's worth a million you can sell it for a million and they give that thing zero percent down and zero percent interest yeah i'm gonna take that deal because i know i can make money on that deal just by selling like you can make hypothetically um let's say you sold that thing for cash like they want a million dollars and they're going to give you zero percent interest. You can sell a thing for cash for eight hundred, and now you have eight hundred cash that you service twenty seven seventy a month, which that brings your your value. You're essentially borrowing money at that point. For uh, let me do this real quick so I can zero. If I sell a thing for eight hundred thousand cash, uh, you're essentially getting one percent money. Who doesn't like one percent money? I don't know. Right. Like if you if you can flip that eight hundred thousand and get more than one percent, you're gonna be all right to service that debt. So it's all when that's why I really 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 love that arbitrage. It is so underrated. If you can get 
seller financing on these properties, you are going to make a lot of money. And you don't even might even not even need our money if you can get the money with no money down. So that's the whole thing about um, so asking for seller financing. I sh ask for seller financing on every deal first because I don't know if they're open to it. They might be worth twenty million dollars and like, oh, you're gonna you're gonna pay me an extra twenty seven hundred a month cash flow. Yeah, that sounds amazing. You know, I already have five million dollars in the bank. What do I need another million dollars for? You know, so um, you really you really have to. Uh, um, Make that make those offers, man. Talk to more people. So our whole thing is once we get the fund in place, we're gonna be a little bit of bullies. Hey, I want 20% down. All right, 20% down. If you finance the rest of 0%, now we get 80% of the value as 0%, we're still gonna hit a home run. Yeah, 20% is what I mean, loans are normally required at, right? Uh that's normally what banks offer. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're doing commercial, sometimes they bring you 30 to 40% down. So it's it depends on the asset class. But I mean, 20% down is still a win. 10% down is a win. Like once we get the fund up in place, I mean, we're going to like 10, 20%, 30% is totally within the realm. As long as they seller finance the rest of it as 0%, I mean, we're going to make some money on this thing, especially if we can value add. So like the cool thing that we do is like, if we buy it for a million, it might be worth a million now, but if we can subdivide it and sell it for two or 1.5 and we get 0% financing, ooh, it's, it's going to be a really great deal. So this is the whole thing of like uh, me and Anthony, like, uh, we're going to record a podcast about this. We talked about this uh, the other day, but we're going to record about being broke has forced us to be creative. And now we've become better investors because we're forced to be creative. We're not buying with cash. Now that we're going to get cash in hand with using the fund, we're still going to leverage in on seller finance because seller finance just amplifies the cash we have on hand to a great degree. So now we just, so act like you're broke whenever you're, whenever you're in this game, because you, you can accelerate your capital and leverage more assets if you're getting 0% financing. It's a win-win. And I mean, also at that point, whatever difference in down payment is in your pocket. Yeah, exactly. So the lower down payment, it makes us better because we can essentially sell or finance anything down. Uh, we Down payments come to us. Um, if we need $100,000 down, well, so we need one buyer to buy cash. So that's where like Diego's deal is good because He's buying three lots cash. That means we get a cash infusion of 600K and we're only putting down 500. You know, so that's that's a huge benefit when you can piece the deals together and that you might only need a little bit of, you might need like, for instance, that deal is a 500K down, 2 million purchase price. We have a buyer buying 30 acres of the lots for 600K cash. If you just need a transactional funding for 60 days and you're going to reimburse that money, boom, you can find that very, pretty easily because you are you already have end buyer that's going to buy 600K cash and you get deed to the property for 500. So this 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 uh, Poteet deal is going to be killer. And just this deal alone will probably do several million off of it by the end of the year. Um, it's going to be crazy. I mean, we'll make 600 off of it uh, but hopefully by the end of the month, which is crazy, which is, if you think about it, it's almost, uh, it's over a quarter of the purchase price. It's crazy. So the power of seller finance really amplifies what you can do and what the capital you have. Good question. Any other questions? Peter. You want to introduce yourself? Yes. Um, what's up, guys? My name is Peter. Just joined the group last week. Um, uh, connected with Anthony. And um, yeah, excited to be here. Excited to work with you guys. Um, something that Daniel mentioned earlier in the call is um, kind of tapping back on these um, other listings or in these other uh, properties that you guys have. Yep. Um, so, um, I've, I'm actually working with Anthony on a deal um, where a wholesaler that's not in this group um, got the deal under contract back in August and um, they got it locked up too high and um, they had me reach back out to the agent and I reached out to the agent and the agent um, did know that I knew this wholesaler and um, I was actually able to get the property under contract for 200 grand less than they had under contract and there was our spread. So. Um, yeah, 
So if you have any of those type of situations where you got it too high, just send them to me and let's see if um, we can make it work. 100%. This is this is the there was a video I watched recently and I posted it inside the we have a Facebook chat for a couple people in here and I posted it in there. It was a guy how he negotiates a Facebook marketplace uh, cars. So he's buying cars. So he has a group chat with him, him and his four buddies and he finds a car that he wants to buy. Let's say and he, and the thing in the video, it's like he, it's like seven grand. So he has his four buddies. Hey, I'll buy it for three. I'll buy it for two. I'll buy it for twenty five hundred. So now the seller has it in their mind that I'm getting offers for three. Maybe it's only worth three and then it'll come in and buy it for thirty five hundred. <laughs> yeah, because a lot of these agents. Um... You guys probably know some of them are so delusional the way they think that these properties are valued. Yeah. So if everyone is just coming in and giving them low offers, they're going to reconsider what the true um, market value is, uh, rather than what the comps are showing on Zillow. Hundred percent. So this is this is one thing I want to allude to before we get off the call is your full price seller finance offer is not embarrassing. Your agent might think it's embarrassing. But you can always ask them when's the last time they received a full time, full price uh, offer on their property that they're representing. I guarantee you they're like, well, I've never received a full price offer. It's always been this uh, weight was significantly lower. Okay, then present the offer. You know, um, I had a, so I had a, uh, so it had, I was talking to somebody, one of the students here, and they had that situation come up. And I'm like, don't make sure you, this is a full price offer. It's just not cash. So please present it to your seller. Like this is a very serious offer. And the whole thing is, is if we can get seller finance on it, boom, we're in the money. We're in the money. And we overpaying doesn't matter. It matters less. Please watch the navigating the offer. Overpaying matters less when you get seller finance long term. I have a quick question. So is there any situation where you can offer full price, even if it's like ridiculously overpriced to make it work? Yeah. Yeah. Watch navigating the offer, please. Okay, it's, it's a good one. It's a good one. Watch the video. Um, it yeah, answers every question you've asked. Yeah, it, it's a it's a good video, man. I I, I really uh, put a lot of work into that video, and it came out really well. So please go watch it. Um, and it breaks on our whole like methodology of why it makes sense. Go ahead, Marvin. Um, this was for Diego's deal, the thirty acres. Like, how much EMD? Well, would you guys like require for something like that, or is it non-refundable? What? Um, they, I think, I don't know. Like, Mike, you know how much they put EMD on that one? I don't know. I just work here. Sorry, what was so, that question? How much of the so EMD did they put down for the petite lots? So we we were uh, for the two four three. 10 grand uh, for per 10 acre lot. How much? Uh, so we were originally asking 10 grand per 10 acre lot. Okay. So it would be like 30,000. Um, Which is uh, 5%. Yeah, right. Uh, we usually ask for 10,000 down uh, every now and then, depending on the buyer. And we might take a little bit less, but usually 10,000 is good skin in the game to make sure they don't back out. Yep, because we we we've asked for less in the past, and they'll just back out, and we'd rather have them committed to buying because committed to buying is we can sell that note, we can do a lot of things with that, and if they back, if there's enough, if it's not enough, they'll if they get cold feet, they'll just back out. Good question. Uh, thank you. Any other questions? Uh, Daphne says no questions. I've officially been left speechless. The call and what you just talked about right now left me like, <laughs> um, yeah, this, this, this game gets pretty crazy. Um, there's a lot of things to learn. If you don't know and understand it all, it's okay. Um, if you hang around long enough, you'll learn. Right, Diego? Right, Mike? Well, you bet. You bet, buddy. I, I've been at it for six months and I didn't see anything for a while. And I had a lot of deals fall apart. And I just had to be consistent and just keep learning. Every, every failure is an opportunity for learning. Yep. Most, most definitely. You're, you're going to have struggles. And I tell everybody, you know, especially when they start, um, don't focus on one deal. Focus on four or five. 
and just continue to, you know, keep talking to people, stay in contact with people, and more importantly, follow up. You will have no problem making money in this business if you make phone calls and you follow up. So all it really takes, everything else you will learn as you go, all the little tips and tricks, they're just things you pick up from listening to conversations like we have daily. Um, but, you know, you got to have a strong spirit, thick skin, and a will to win and just continue moving forward. And you will definitely have a happy 2024 for sure. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave you all with a tip today. Um, scan other Facebook groups. Um, there's a bunch of other land groups out there, uh, people that have opportunities. Um, I comment and sometimes in those groups just to kind of see what happens here and there. Um, I commented on one and I got sent an opportunity where we could probably make 40 grand on a deal. And it was just me commenting, making a comment and somebody already had a deal in hand. So if you don't have a deal in hand, maybe you can find somebody else that has one and you can make money on that. So you don't necessarily have to start from scratch at any point. You can find somebody that has one and that needs help. And that's where I'll leave it. Y'all have a, uh, I hope 2024 is going to be amazing. I uh, hope you all come along for the ride and make some money with us. Um, all this money we're raising uh, feeds down, trickles down through the ecosystem of HiveMind. So um, if you are stuck or need help in certain areas or you're good at one thing or another, we might have a lot of opportunity coming up in the future. So I hope everybody here uh, finds a way to monetize some part of the group in some way, shape, or form. And uh, let's have a good year this year. All right. Rah. There you go. Uh, everybody here, 2024 is going to be amazing. Uh, we'll see you all next week, next Tuesday. Bye. If you would like to receive hot leads right to your cell phone in a text message, check out hiveleads.io and you can receive the same leads we've been receiving in our campaign for three and a half years that's made us successful in the land game. Check us out.